Gretna has been marrying eloping couples for over a century and now is no exception. Running away to avoid the mother-in-law's disapproval today are Kevin and Natalie with some surprised friends. <coughs> Hotelier Alistair Houston has a unique marketing idea. So quite nice we would have the biggest thistle in the world. Go on. And Don and Janet want to celebrate in style. Didn't actually know that was there. <laughs> Our first couple, Don and Janet, have travelled to Gretna Green from County Wicklow in Ireland. They've been together for the last three years. Don's a divorcee, and they've decided to elope and have a small wedding with just the two of them. And a camper van. It's me on my best to pull that door. <laughs> There's mine first. <laughs> That's like I keep saying to Janet, uh, I'm not nervous, I'm not nervous, I've been... When Janet, she can't be a nervous person, and I'm trying to say all the time, you know, I'm not nervous, I'm the big fella, you know, the whole thing. But um, quite honestly, like, you know, I'm <laughs> me pants some of the time, like, you know. Whilst Don tries to calm his nerves, Janet's off to beautify herself for tomorrow's ceremony. I didn't expect to feel this nervous. Do you have a lot of guests with you today, then? Um, it's a bit complicated. <laughs> <laughs> I have an old-fashioned mother. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. When you've been married and divorced, yeah. well, you can't get married again. So she doesn't approve, so she doesn't know. <laughs> she will after this. <laughs> she will after this, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the car park, Don's been tidying the van in honour of the occasion. Gretna, I have to say, uh, it's a, a fairy tale area where you run away to get married and that's exactly what it's that's exactly when you come in here uh, it portrays exactly that we have food we have lots of stuff didn't actually know that was there <laughs> most of we have our telly which of course has to wear its safety belt and of course here we have our alternative power in here of course we have our toilet and our shower it's a complete wet room, in other words. With the most important thing for any honeymoon. A blow-up bed, which is very essential. Hope it doesn't burst. All the uh, essentials. I used to uh, pop myself down there. And Janet used to go through the ceiling because uh, the bed wasn't properly pumped up. But uh, we've seen to that. It was fun, but can't have fun forever, you know? Toodle-doo. Alistair Houston is Gretna Green's biggest landowner. This year, he's celebrating 130 years of the family business with some bold new initiatives. We're always trying to do something new and interesting. So when people are coming to Gretna Green who've been here two or three years ago, they're saying, whoa, there's something new here for us this time. He's already built a wall of love. And now he has another idea, designed to raise Gretna Green's profile to new heights. We've got quite a number of sculptures on the place. I've always had a lifelong interest in sculpture, as did my dad, actually, before me. Two years ago at the Highland Show, I saw what must be the biggest thistle in the world, and I thought, wouldn't that be fun to have it, have it Gretna Green? Obviously, thistle is the symbol of Scotland, and it's also quite nice isn't it, to have the biggest thistle in the world. Go on. Having bought the giant sculpture on the spot, today, Alistair is overseeing its installation. Are you well? Are you well? Yeah, Morning. Morning. Are you well? The huge work of art will take pride of place for all to see in the blacksmith's car park. So we're thinking here, yeah. that way on. OK. So then the plan is we'll put the foundation in for the biggest thistle in the world here today. Yep. Get the shovels out. Get the shovels out. Yeah, Let's I've go. got the mini digger here as well, so save your back. With a plan in place and shovels in hand, Alistair wants to ensure that the final placement is spot on. Let's just make sure we get it exactly where we want it, to the eye. Do you want to be, do you want to be equidistant between the end of there and there, do you think? I think so, yeah. I think you want to be half a step. That's up. Boom, boom, boom. Quarter of a step back that way. There. I think it's pretty important to try and 
really nail the detail, if you can, when you're doing something. That looks... Yeah, that's it. That's it, yeah. I like things to be right, yeah. I like things to be right. So something like this, if it's an inch the wrong way, every time I looked at it, it would annoy me that we hadn't just spent that little bit of extra care to get it right. And it's as simple as that, really. I don't know if that's a good quality to have or not, really, but it... <laughs> just the way, just the way it is. Our second couple seeking a Gretna Green style secret wedding are Natalie and Kevin. Ah, it's head button. <laughs> <laughs> We're staying in a small town that everyone knows everyone. Bonded like super glue. Exactly. And I mean, it does look like David Beckham, so that's the <laughs> that's icing on the cake. <laughs> yeah, I like everything about you. Like, well, perfect match and you go on so well. It works. It all just works. We never thought we'd get married again. We've been there, done it, but... Been there, done it, and that's why we're just doing this wee, wee thing just between us. Natalie has been married once before, but she's also nearly walked up the aisle on a few more occasions. How many times have we took it? <laughs> I, I don't remember. No comment. <laughs> don't ask her that. Do six? No, don't tell, don't! <laughs> Could it be six times? <clears throat> Then I'll be sex. You never told me I'm sex. No, maybe four. Where's what is that? Where's the mousy? Where's the mousy? Natalie and Kevin have decided to get married, despite not having everyone's blessing. Your mum's? Yeah, her mum's had doubts. Doubts? Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, but she did say over her dead body, which I said could easily be arranged. That was fine, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I think we are seeing that I'm happy, she'll be happy for me. It's about us. Yeah. It's our family, it's our life, so. Don't like it a lump, eh? Exactly. With their camper van prepped for the honeymoon, runaways Don and Janet prepare to indulge in some more luxurious accommodation. Two a turn, two a turn, yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I like this. After three days in a camper van, never has a couple been so excited about a hotel room. <laughs> I always wanted to see a jacuzzi. <laughs> I always wanted to see a jacuzzi. Well, that's OK, but <laughs> it's a jacuzzi, but you know how to walk them. No, but I figure it out. We don't do it traditional, really. We just spur them in. We don't make plans. We don't think about things too much. <laughs> He's romantic and kind. So, yeah, we got a good deal. <laughs> It is the night before the wedding, so maybe he's sleeping in the camper. You never know, I might get his bed all to himself. <laughs> what are we going to do tonight? Well, we're going to have a nice meal and uh, up to our room, of course, and uh, this is a jacuzzi, you know. But some of Janet's mum's traditional values have rubbed off on her. No, you should go out to the camper van tonight. Oh. Seriously. I'll hold your head. Seriously, you should go to the camper van tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my van all day, so... Uh... No, but you can sleep in tonight. Yeah. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> Did I hear? Bye-bye. <laughs> As it turns out, Janet wasn't joking. There's nothing more really to say except that I mustn't forget to close the skylight. Today, there's a new arrival in Gretna Green. A very large metal thistle. It's the day Alistair's been waiting for. Yeah, it looks great. I'm really pleased with it. And I'll be even more pleased when it's sitting upright. I think it looks wonderful. It looks good on the, it's, it looks it good on the back of that yeah. buggy, doesn't it? Yeah. So, crack on. It's not long before Alistair's artwork starts to draw the attention he was hoping for. It was quite interesting. I see we had quite an audience just even when we were getting it installed there. So it's, all, it's already starting to be admired, which is wonderful. Alistair may be excited, but what about the verdict of the locals? What do you think? Why does money have to spoil the, the naturalness of the original? Um, 
experience and event for people here. I'm not going to agree with you, of course, because I'm the owner of the no, property. Because, because, you're, because, you're, <laughs> because, yeah. because, what, because what we've tried to do is keep the dignity of the ceremony, but also add on to that the opportunity for the community here to get involved yeah, with employment. Yeah, That's yes, the main as thing. You, as you rake in the money. Well, we try and make a profit, certainly, oh. yes. yeah. But I, profit shouldn't be seen as an ugly word. Alistair's left hoping his other ideas for Centenary Week get a better response. <laughs> Good to meet you. It's the morning of Natalie and Kevin's secret wedding. The restaurant's nice. Oh, it's got a lovely bar. And they've arrived to inspect their chosen accommodation. Thank you. Au revoir. Shall we meet the neighbours? Cooey! <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Wembley! <laughs> it's not kicked in yet. It hit me when we went to, to get the, I the documents. My, I got a bit shaky. When I put my kilt on that, I know. Still getting nervous, I think. It's still a secret. People have been texting me saying that, thinking that we're going to come back engaged. We're good. Just see what the reaction's going to be. We're not bothered. As long as we have fun and it's, it's up to us. I've done it for us, nobody else. Do you agree? Yeah. With the ceremony just hours away, Kevin heads out to collect his kilt as Natalie gets herself ready. I'm usually quite quick about makeup, but I've been trying to do it neater and it's just not happening because my hands are too shaky. I'm really nervous. Like, this is it now. Just chill out and and so that'll happen. It'll all come into place nice. We've already been there and done our weddings before, and we just wanted this. I just wanted this for just me and Nats. Let's just get your neck size. That's it's just, it's just the best way to do it. It's feeling super real. It's just like, I don't know. Oh. What a glove, eh? Look at his hands. It'll be worth it. After a lonely night in the camper van, Don's suited and booted. Uh, well, what do you think? Um, but there's just one thing missing. Yep. Yeah, gotta go and get me brain now. It may be just the two of them, but this couple intends to marry in style. First, a Gretna Green wedding must-have, an owl to fly their rings down the aisle. Then, their dream transport to get them to the church on time. They're absolutely gorgeous. Somebody fall for a taxi. <laughs> you take your bouquet. Thank you. Thank you so much. They're absolutely stunning. They've done a really good job on them. Yeah. <laughs> Run away. We are. But no sooner have the carefree couple arrived than Don realises he's forgotten something rather important. Janet turns to me and says, yeah, you got the rings? <laughs> what rings? <laughs> so, Zoe... I'd nip back to get the wedding rings from things. We're standing talking, and it never once crossed my mind to mention anything about paperwork or anything. There's no paperwork. They've left it in the room. Sandy says, Sandy, being the minister, says, uh, you have your paperwork. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what oh, paperwork? Down there, it's down there, Jill. It happens all the time. Not wedding rings and paperwork, one or the other, usually. <laughs> Not hiding the fact that I did forget them. Yeah. You know, I didn't really know that I had to bring them up today. <laughs> but that is the thing. I didn't really know I had to bring them here today. You know, that kind of, you know, you know, and give them to you. Of course, we have to sign them. I should have realised that. I should have realised that right. to register. Fun and games. Happy days. We're eccentric as hell. <laughs> Nothing's ever normal for us. <laughs> With their wedding minister and owl sat waiting, emergency measures are required. 
Luckily, there's a horse and cart on standby. We arrived, beautiful time, two minutes to go, when Donnie shouts, we forgot the paperwork. So he owes me a Guinness and he owes them some apples. I'll put my hat on and well, away we go. And walk on. <laughs> At the old blacksmith's. After two years together as a couple, it's time for Kevin and Natalie to finally tie the knot. Aww. I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present to witness that I to take thee to be my lawful wedded wife. Till death do us part. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse, I'll come. Kevin, will you take Natalie to be your wife? And forsaking all others, will you be faithful to her for as long as you both shall live? I do. And Natalie, do you take Kevin to be your husband? I do. There's an awful lot of love in this room. <laughs> it's lovely, actually, it really is. You may kiss your bride. We can give him a big cheer. Hey. <laughs> It went amazing, it was good. Yeah, it went perfect. It was a really good day. Back at Anvil Hall, things are starting to look up for Don and Janet. Ah! There you go. Oh. Hey. We have the, the paperwork, so we are good to go. Good to go. After a stressful wait, our eloping couple can finally take their vows. I, Donald McCabe. Donald McCabe. Do take thee. Do take thee to be my alpha wed his wife. Richard Burr, in sickness and health, to death to his part. Can I please have the rings? Oh, wow. Thank you. She's so gorgeous. Thank you. Gosh. <laughs> this could take a few minutes. <laughs> I now pronounce you husband and wife. Congratulations, Jimmy Kissman. Back in their carriage, the newlyweds head off to their wedding reception for two. Hoping for no more mishaps before returning home to face the music from Janet's mum. First, though, Don takes a quick call from his boss. Give Mrs. McKay my best regards. You give it to yourself. She's right here beside me. Say hi, George. Hi, George. How are you? Congratulations, Mrs. McKay. Thank you very much. It's amazing. I, I loved every second of it. And I wouldn't <laughs> change anything. <laughs> I really wouldn't. I love you. Everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> It's the day after Natalie and Kevin's wedding, and the eloping couple are about to reveal all to their friends and family. I've been shaking since we, like, I've, I'm more worried today than I was yesterday about yeah. going round and telling them all, but as soon as we've told them all it's out of the way, then whatever. Let us go. The surprise announcement appears to have gone down well, and it smiles all round. We were a wee bit worried in how everyone would react, but I think there was a few surprised faces and seen a, a few tears, but as expected there. Eh? But what of Kevin's once disapproving mum? I'm happy for him. He's in love, and I love Kevin, so I'm happy for him. I'm really, really proud of him. And he's settled down and he's in love and he's got a beautiful wee girl. And I couldn't be happier for him. Right, that's enough. It's went perfect. I think my, the biggest fear was my mum, but oh, my mum's over the moon. As long as I'm happy, she's happy. Coming up tomorrow, American couple Walter and Gracie give the locals a dance lesson. 
Check it to the right, to the other way back around that ring, all the way around when you get back home. Dale and Pauline brave the inclement Scottish weather. Today we finally got to do the ceremony that we wanted to do 21 years ago. And Alistair Houston brings a little bit of drama to Gretna Green. You did this. And Father, I know it's done. <laughs>